Hello guys, I am back with another video and today's video is about Dr. Max Jacobson, also known as Dr. Feelgood, Dr. Needles and Miracle Max. This man is famous for treating celebrity clients with his vitamin shots laced with various substances that included amphetamine and methamphetamine, which is known as speed. He was the main man that started the meth epidemic in the United States. But before I go any further, make sure to like this video, subscribe and comment below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Disclaimer, I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Dr. Jacob Soon was born in Germany on July 3, 1900 and his parents were Jewish. His father was a butcher and during his youth he graduated with a medical degree from Friedrich Wilhelm University of Berlin. He studied under Freud and Jung and began to experiment with methamphetamine. He also worked in hospitals during World War I and then qualified as a doctor. At this time, he also creates elixirs by formulating odd mixtures of vitamins, enzymes, animal placenta, blood serum, and hormones. While in Germany, Hitler and Eva Braun developed an addiction to his concoction. In 1936, he had to flee Germany due to Nazi reign and moved to the United States and established an office in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. After the move, he brought all his elixirs and cocktails with him, and he started to make his vitamin shots in 1950. President Kennedy was a client of his, and he would frequently come to him for injections. Kennedy's health was deteriorating to the point that he needed clutches to walk. When he gets the vitamins, it gives him energy and makes him high. He likes the way it makes him feel, and he began to develop an addiction to it. Dr. Jacob Suda will accompany him on several occasions, for example, when he had a submit meeting with Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. The story goes that Kennedy did not want to appear weak by using his clutches, so he asked Dr. Jacob Soon to give him a fix for his muscle pain. He would also treat Jackie Kennedy as well. According to the story, Jackie was suffering from postpartum depression, so John Kennedy called Dr. Jacob to give his wife a fix. After the fix, Jackie is full of energy and her mood is different. One day, John F. Kennedy was so high that he ran naked down a corridor in a hotel because he was having a psychotic reaction to the drugs. He was also with Peter Lawford high on his elixir. The Secret Service had to come and sedate Kennedy and keep him in check. John and Jackie Kennedy remained his client until their death. He also began to attract all types of clients in entertainment, politics, government officials, royals, mafia bosses, fashion designers, photographers, and dictators. His patients will come to him once a year, month, weeks, or days to get their daily injections. Dr. Jacob Soon's longtime patients do not have to come to the office for daily shots. They are given 30 cubic centimeter vials of the drug, usually mixed with vitamins and hormones, and a number of disposable needles. They have been taught to inject themselves with one cubic centimeter a day. He did make a lot of money, but he got to hang with the Kennedys and go to African Sapphires with Prince Radziwill. Cecil B. DeMille took Dr. Jacob Soon to Egypt as his primary physician when filming The Ten Commandments. Eddie Fisher was also one of Dr. Jacob Soon's patients, and he will take him to dinner in Hollywood and Las Vegas. He will not perform or start his show unless Dr. Jacob Soon is in the audience, just so he can get his fix later on. Fisher was also invited to his wedding, and he wrote a picture of snapshots, stating he is still my god. People threw him the party to honor him at the Panamanian Embassy. Eusebio Morales gave him a medal for his work in medicine. With all the fame, success, and achievement, his personality started to change. People said that he got cocky, arrogant, and saw himself as a godlike figure. He liked the idea that public figures were coming to him and felt like he was wanted. Also at this time, he was injecting his wife with the serum, which later ended up killing her. Many patients stated that they had a bad experience with his vitamins injections. Many of his patients stated that Dr. Jacob soon will be abruptive and gruff, that he would throw patients out. An example of this is when he threw Tennis Williams out of his office because he was drunk. Mr. Preminger, who is a producer, stated that his injections made him feel terrible and had a fearful experience. Mr. Capote, a former patient of Jacob soon, stated that he collapsed and was hospitalized after the injection. He had withdrawals, mental depression, and physical lethargy. Dr. Jacob soon stated that patients become disenchanted with him because they were either mentally unstable or they were under the influence of alcohol when they were taking his drugs. He also stated that his patients should not drink or they will experience a bad reaction. Investigations were made and they stated that there is no evidence of bad reaction when taking amphetamine with alcohol. It has also been found that Jacob soon sometimes gives his patients barbiturates, which is fatal if taken in large amounts. Dr. Jacob soon said that he doesn't understand why his patients get high of his vitamins because he only put 25 milligrams of amphetamine with each injection. And he has taken his own concoction for many years and he is fine. Alan J. Lerner stands with Dr. Jacob soon and states that he has treated his sinus headaches. 
However, Alan was addicted to the injection, and he said it helps him write his scripts and see life in a good light. Alan made his wife take the shots, but she got high and felt weird, so she stopped after two months. His patients stated that when you are under the influence of the injection, you tend to stay up all night, up to three days. Patients became addicted and couldn't live without it, so they broke into his office looking for his injections. Without it, a lot of patients were miserable, depressed, tired, and nervous. One of his patients stated that amphetamine made him very thirsty, talkative, nervous, and his jaw would grind. One patient went mad and ended up in an insane asylum and was later diagnosed with amphetamine poisoning. Another patient by the name of Mark Shaw died of methamphetamine, but Dr. Jacob soon claimed that he had a history of heart disease, which was a lie. He died due to the injection and his internal organs were damaged. There was heavy scarring and discoloration along the veins in his arm, and he had a lot of track marks. Patient described his office as a beehive of activities. There's always a receptionist, two nurses, and a group of men working in the laboratory. There were cauldrons and masses of rocks and colored lights and things boiling around. It was like science fiction. People also stated that his office was very messy and smelled like tobacco and formaldehyde. It has been found that he added uranium and little rocks in the vials to give energy. He also told people that he was involved in high-level medical research. The congressional record shows, for example, that Dr. Jacob soon told the committee that he makes his medications using ultrasonic bombardment and a strong magnetic field and the ability of certain minerals and precious stones to retain fluorescence. His work has always remained unknown to the public and it was never published in new outlets or gossip columns. He also refused to tell his clients his formula. Bobby Kennedy made it his mission to find out what the formula indicated. He sneaked a few vials and had them analyzed. He found out about amphetamine and methamphetamine in the injection, and the worst of it was when he found out about other ingredients such as monkey gyads, sheep sperm, human placenta, steroids, and some vitamin E told John Kennedy about the methamphetamine, but John didn't care. He stated, I don't care if it is horse piss. It makes me feel good. John Kennedy made him a regular member of his entourage and his role was kept secret. When Kennedy called him, he answered even if he was dealing with patients. When the president needed his fix, he was the man to call. John Kennedy's physicians didn't like him, so he felt that quitting was the best option for him. John Kennedy laughed at him and tore his resignation letter and told him to get back to work. He was given a free pass to come to the White House when he was summoned. Dr. Jacob soon was also at the presidential inauguration and attended John Kennedy's 4 5th birthday. Marilyn Monroe sang happy birthday to Kennedy, but she was high from the injections. Dr. Jacob soon started to believe that he can cure everything. He once gave a patient a shot and told the patient that the injection will cure his or her blindness. He also created a cream and told his patient that it can cure acne and cancer, but it did not. For the cream, he added ordinary hand cream, vitamins, and the leftovers from his concoction. Judy Garland went to Dr. Jacob soon for an injection when she was about to perform at Carnegie Hall. Actors who had staged frights and singers who had lost their voice all saw Dr. Jacob soon. That includes Marlene Dietrich, Elvis Presley, Pope Piestrum and 12, Elizabeth Taylor, Frank Sinatra, and Johnny Mathias, and one patient describes the effect of the injection as orgasmic. He started to act bizarre and disillusioned. He boiled his concoctions in beakers containing precious stones. He ran his potions over magnets and attached magnets to the syringes he used. And for some patients, including Fisher, he makes his own blood into his elixir before injecting it. Of course, his blood contained amphetamines because he was taking his own medicine. According to his daughter, he took amphetamine so that he could cure his patients day and night. He did an interview with Rensberger exposing him for malpractice and unsafe work environment. The interview was published in Time magazine and in 1975, his medical license was terminated. The reason for this was that the New York Medical Board began investigating Jacob soon. It found that the doctor had purchased at least 29.7 pounds of amphetamines in five years enough for more than 100,000 doses a year. It also found that his speed spiked vitamin shots contained filthy, putrid, and decomposed substances. A few years later, he tried to get his medical license restored but was rejected. He died a few months later at the age of 79. He died a broken man, his body wrecked by more than half a century of poisoning himself with his own homemade dangerous drugs. To some people, they see him as an evil man who didn't care and wanted fame and glory, and to others, they saw him as a good man who wanted to cure people. However, people have to acknowledge that this man is a self-made doctor, an immigrant who fled Nazi Germany to New York and created his own clinic, and had John F. Kennedy the powerful man at the time as a client is truly impressive. I just wish that he could have been more cautious and aware of the damage he was doing and not let his ego get in the way. There are two books called The Dr. Feelgood Casebook, Max Jacobson, Einstein or Frankenstein, and Dr. Feelgood, 
the shocking story of the doctor who may have changed history by treating and drugging JFK, Marilyn, Elvis, and other prominent figures, both books written by Richard Lertzman and William Burns. These books are interesting to read, but at the same time frightening, because you'll wonder how one doctor can dupe all these celebrities, especially the presidents. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Please like, share, and comment on this video, and most importantly, subscribe for more videos. Bye.